Okay, so welcome to the final lecture, and this is going to be the upgrades. So if you made it this far, you can definitely use your rig as it is. But if you want to give it that a uh, couple of extra uh, boosts uh, that will really help your animators, then this is where we can start to increase uh, the quality of our rig. Uh, so the first thing I'm doing is uh, I'm shaping our controls, and it was a video that took about 45 minutes. Uh, so I cut that down, or not cut it down, but I sped it up to about... 700% and then I'm talking over that track so it doesn't become so tedious. Uh, the next thing I'm setting up is the global scale and we're doing that because if our animators want to create our, or make our characters a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller to emphasize a certain character trait in certain shots. Uh, if you want to show dominance you might want to make it bigger and, and stronger then we can scale our character up. Uh, and that's uh, we're doing that in the second part or in the second video. And uh, the next thing we do is the knee twist, which is a really fast lecture where I just uh, show you guys uh, some of the already built-in Maya functions for our IK handles, and we just kind of connect that up. And some people would leave it alone, but we're just going to connect it up because we might as well do it to give our animators even more freedom. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is set up auto pole vector move, which means that our animators don't have to, for the basic movements, uh, move around the pole vectors. They can basically just move the, the foot controllers, and then that should uh, give them everything from uh, everything they would need for like doing certain walks and runs and s like not too complicated turns uh, and we're going to create an on off switch so they can choose to not have it on or, or, or take it off completely or they can blend between the two uh, and the last thing I'm going to do which is going to be the longest part of this video is going to be the toes uh, it's just it's a lot about setting up the joints and the reason why I picked that lecture last is because it's very tedious because what we're doing is effectively just making fk uh, controllers for all our toes uh, and then we're just gonna take that modify group and connect um, the rotation to an attribute so we can rotate all the three controllers for our feet at the same time but that's basically it so um, let's get to it and uh, and hang in there because you're about to make your rig really awesome and then we're gonna continue with the skinning in, an in another course but uh, really well done, and uh, I hope that you, you finish and you had fun. And please comment and like, and uh, remember to sign up on the website. Uh, anyways, good luck, guys. Okay, so here we're going to try and upgrade the controllers of the rig. And while this is running at 750% in speed, I still want to just kind of talk about what my thought process is when I'm building my controllers and basically what I've been trying to teach you guys the whole way through up until now is that we no just need to block stuff out and just because I'm starting to make my controllers pretty doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be final when I'm doing this this is just upgrading from what I thought looked crap but for and what we're gonna give our animator but the animator might come back to us and say you know what I, this shape is not logical and I I'd like it to look like this then that's okay we're gonna correct that but we should as an overall give something away that we're fairly happy with ourselves before we want to give it away and the first thing I did here as you can see right now I'm changing the controllers in the neck to look uh, something different than the, the IK and FK so I differentiate the IK and FK controllers uh, and in order to get space, I just move the head a little bit in front. So keep in mind that you're only moving the shapes right here. So remember that you have to be in component mode by hitting F8, uh, going into component mode with right, uh, left click, right clicking, and going to vertices. Um, but what I'm basically thinking is that I don't want my controller to first of all look the same, and I want to change and the, the colors. Uh, we've already done the colors, but I'm making sure that everything is is separated out to be more, even more clear what's IK and FK. So as we've done before. Um, I changed the shapes all my IK and you can see here that my IK uh, controllers are all double controllers for the spine and uh, for the tail will be as well and here I'm creating the shoulder controller and I'm just trying to create a shape that's a little bit different than everything else so because uh, that area is gonna get quite cluttered like we're gonna have um, our shoulder controller right underneath our chest and uh, our neck controller so I wanted to look very different and that's why I made this cross here um, so while everything else is kind of circular uh, or needles and then because I don't like that the controller is filling too much in the face here I'm trying to make something that's a little bit smaller so instead of having these big squares in the face 
um, just putting something just around the neck here and I while while the animators can if they want still um, choose not to show nerves but in order for them not to hit that on and off I'm trying to make something that at least doesn't get too much in their way while still being intuitive so it's that balance that we're trying to look for uh, you can see I just read it the shoulders there because I didn't think they actually uh, not the shoulders but the actual scapulas because I didn't think they looked exactly what I was looking for and here I'm changing the FK controllers on the tail so they're the same as they are on the neck uh, look wise um, and I think that really makes it stand out to be something different also the animators will very fastly know okay if it's green it's an it's an IK if it's yellow it's an FK and also now if it's a needle it's still an IK you know there's a lot of hints there that'll intuitively for them be easier and here I'm just changing the head control so it's not filling the whole face and while you can see the skinning is still quite rough because that'll be our next well that'll be the next big lecture um, it doesn't really matter with the skinning right now now, now we're just trying to get get the rig to some point where we can finish off the actual talk about rigging and then move on to the skinning so normally I'll probably do the skinning before I do really pretty controllers or anything but we just want to get something that we can give to our animator and in this case is making the control shapes is also part of the rigging so I kind of wanted to do that before I go into the skinning as in terms of like how the course is structured um, so here I'm just lastly changing the feed controls to just look a little bit different so the actual foot controller will be a soft cube while the ball rotation controller on the feet will be a complete square and once again something that just helps differentiate something so it's not all just circles and cubes but so we have a little bit of of different stuff anyways that's the that was the one hour I spent on shaping the controllers um, yeah so you can go on and do the same thing uh, now if you want to or you can keep whatever you have and go on to the scanning course but anyways um, let's move on to the next upgrade all right let's create the next upgrade here guys so <coughs> to just quickly move on uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is what happens when we scale our character normally right now you can see that some things are behaving quite good and some things are quite behaving really weird and um, let's look at the underlying hierarchies here so I do like this and hit on my joints you'll see that my spine is actually scaling really wrong which causes everything else to kind of blow up so it looks a lot worse than it actually is because you can see if I scale up here my controllers are actually staying in the same size as everything here and that's quite good uh, there's a few things like that my leg joints are not staying in the same scale um, but overall this is actually pretty good so what happens here if I scale it small let's look at the joints here what's happening okay so they have a value coming in here they actually get affected by their global scales or you know the scale factors and that's a problem for us um, we can't see it happening with the tails and the neck and that's because um, we I haven't set up this question stretch and the scale for my um, for my neck yet and you can see here my graphic card is actually struggling a little bit to make this whole calculation but if I move my controller here it will jump back so sometimes that will happen um, I guess I need to get a new computer anyways so we need to change the inputs that we have into this uh, scale and if you've done it for your uh, IK change for your ne for your necks and your tails then you need to do the same process I'm just gonna show you how to do the how to do the um, the spine and then you guys can figure out how to do it on uh, on your tails as well it's the same process so the first thing I'm going to do is I need one value because instead of having three values that comes out of this I need one value that can go in and manipulate those multiply and divide nodes that we have in it going in here and since we divided that into the scale of the X is one kind of multiply and divide node and the scale of the Y and Z is a different one because we wanted to take the opposite value so let's try and go in here and the first thing I'm going to do is just select my global controller and I'm going to make a global scale 
uh, attribute. And I want it to be minimum of one or minimum point one. You could say by like zero, zero, one or whatever. I, I, I'm just illustrating, but the basic thing is that we want the default value to be one and the maximum scale to be something big. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm selecting my global controller and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take this value and I'm going to add that to scale all the channels here. So you can see like I'm filling up the channels just with this controller here. And now I can't use my scale value here anymore but I can use my global scale attribute and you can see like it's, do it's doing the same thing for us but with one attribute and, and that's what we wanted. Uh, so I can take these and I can lock and hide them. So let's just lock and hide those guys and now I can no longer get that channel open but I can still manipulate it with my new global attribute. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select one of these um, joints here and I'm going to take general, sorry, I'm going to go into my node editor and as soon as I'm into the node editor I'm going to take the input connection here. So let's try and drag this guy down, guys down here. Uh, and we can see like we have the squash and stretch multiplier and divide node and we have our spine multiplier divide node. And the problem with, with this right now is that we want to be able to, let me just move this down here a little bit and go into our eyeliner. So the problem right now is that we want to scale our mechanics because we basically want to scale our joints to follow our rig, right? So as soon as the rig gets bigger, we should be able to scale that up. So the next thing we're going to do, and we don't need to scale our geometry group, and why don't we need to scale the geometry group? We don't need to scale the geometry group because it's set set to, um, it's our geometry will eventually be driven by our skin or by our joints, right? So if we move our uh, geometry and remove our joints. We're gonna move two. We're gonna move a, a running hierarchy, which is basically gonna give us a double transformation. So the only thing we need to hook up to here is the mechanics. So if I say that and say general and connection editor here, and now I'm gonna say my global scale. I'm gonna set that scale into all these values. So we're gonna see something funky here, and the first thing we're gonna see is that our tail and our neck is actually gonna mess up now. And you can see that's really not what we wanted. But what's actually going on? So the problem with this is that we inside of our hierarchy here, even though we set this one to, we set our mechanics to not inherit transformations, that doesn't count for the scale because we actually added that in on our own. So now we're actually still scaling. So what we need to do is that we need to take out our IK or we need to do something with our IKs. And you'll see here I have my IK uh, CV curve here, the curve that is being manipulated to move my joint chain. And if I select my global controller now and scale this up, you can see that it's actually going crazy. And why is that? It's because the, this chain, and some of you will have already guessed it, is already being moved by my joints. And if I'm moving it as well by scaling, I'm actually double translating that. So you can see every time I move it, it's actually moving twice the length that everything else, sh everything else is doing. So I'm going to go in here and say inherit transformation off. And that actually sort of snaps it back. And I'm going to do the same thing for my... Let's see if we can find that here. If you can't find it, I can see mine is here. We can go into the group under the neck and take the spine CRV. And you'll see that it snaps back there. So if I do like this, it snaps back. So even though this looks a little bit messed up, we're getting somewhere. And the next thing I'm going to do is go into my spine here. And I'm going to take the spine here and I'm going to take that off. And now we're actually starting to get somewhere, but we're still not entirely there. Because we still have these direct connections that are going in. And they're still being affected by the fact, and let's think about this. If I take this one down here, <coughs> and again, I'm just gonna shake my camera to update that. So if I take this one down here and I move this around, you can see that these these joints that I have here that are basically being controlled by my con big green controllers here because they're the IK joints. When I move them around, it, it increases the length of that C, uh, uh, of that curve that we have running through and the problem is that when I increase the size of my character that length is being added as well which means that we're actually not receiving only the global scaling we're also receiving the length because we take the arc length of our curve we're actually making that longer because we're moving our controller so we need to find something that we can multiply and divide with um, to these values so if I set this one now and what I usually do is just to make this easier I go down here and then I just say let's try and make a key here so key selected and let's go to 25 and put this to 2 
Right, so now oh, you can see I have auto key on, so it's just coming on. If you haven't got auto key on, you jump here, and then you just set it to two and hit key select it. Now you go back. So now we can actually, instead of me picking up that attribute all the time and try and scale it, it's just running on keys. We just need to remember to remove those keys later on. But for now, this is great. So I still have my squash and stretch here, which is great. But the problem is that it's not really coping with my squash and stretch spine that, uh, and my global. So now we're going to go into the to our attribute editor here and see what actually happens. So we got this info node here and you can see like when I have this info node it has a certain value of 162.118 and it's dividing and it, that, that divides with the same value but the problem is that that value has to be a floating value you know it has to be a value or a constant a constant removing value so right now it is a constant and we want it to be a value that's that can be manipulated or is being manipulated as we're scaling so you can see like I'm as I increase the size of the beast or the monster the we have this fixed value and that should technically be the same value as this one because we want to divide with the same because if we divide it by the same we know that that's going to give a value of one so this is where our global controller comes in handy so i'm just going to add that into my hierarchy here and there we go so right now i'm going to set this one let's set that back let's set this one back i'm going to duplicate this one of these or you can make a new and i'm just going to rename that so i'm going to say name multi oh, sorry middle spine global scale mold and out of that I'm gonna take my scale global scale into one of these so since we're multiplying it doesn't really matter which order we're doing it in. and let's make sure that this one is actually set to multiply before we do anything and you can see the original length here 162.18 that's the value that I want to multiply with so now whenever I scale up my global controller that's gonna give a value of like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and so on, because it's a floating value. It's going to multiply with the original length. So that new length is going to be the same length that we're putting into these two. So if I take the output here, sorry, we don't want to take the p channel that's occupied, so we don't want to take this channel. Then we want to take this guy. We take this, put him in here and put that into the input 2x. So right now you can see that I'm actually multiplying by itself, multiplying and divide by itself. But if I go in here now, and let's try and shut these things down so we can see what's going on. You can see that we're actually scaling perfectly well because we're no longer, oh actually did I close that down? No, so you can see here, we're no longer scaling with an unfixed value on an on unconstant. We're scaling with the value of our, of the original length of our arc length which means that the input here will be one and we'll still have the possibility of scaling that. So that's how you set up global scale. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit tricky to begin with, but I'm sure you guys can get your head around it. You're clever if you already made it here, so that's great. And let's try and just make the ultimate test here. We want to move our character around, scale him up and down. That's great. And the last thing we're going to do is just lock and hide this visibility button here. Okay, so that's basically it for setting up global scale. I hope that makes sense uh, and good luck. Okay, so let's continue with the next upgrade for the <coughs> character. And it's gonna be a really short one for this one. So on this one, we're just gonna add a knee twist that we automatically actually have built into our IK controllers, but we're just gonna um, expose the actual attributes now so we can have our animators using them, so I'm just gonna go in here and say knee, knee twist, and just go like, ah, uh, we don't want to limit it actually, so let's um, let's remove that again and remove this one again, just to hit add, and we basically got a knee rotate here, and the only thing I'm gonna do is just go through one by one and uh, selecting my, I don't want to go with the spring solvers, I just want to go with the regular solvers, and that's basically it. So if I just go in here and say connect and say from my knee twist to my twist keep on doing that for the rest of them there we go and there we go knee twist oh not into the blend that's definitely not what we want twist and then from this guy to this one load those up knee twist 
twist and for this guy to this guy knee twist to knee twist and that's basically it so now you can see if I select all my controllers here I just some of them and I use my knee twist I'll have these motions for free and that's it's basically the same as our pole vectors are doing but sometimes it's nice to have an offset for an animator and then then they can use this for the knee twist instead and the same thing goes for the background or the back or the hind leg controllers and that's so super super simple easy upgrade we might as well even though people don't usually like using these kind of things like the offset and all that stuff but you know it's 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 there so why let's just let's just use it while it's there right uh, so this was the really shortest update that we're gonna do and uh, I'm gonna continue with the next one now so good work all right good evening guys so <coughs> I just had like a um, <laughs> quick couple of minutes to do another tutorial and in this one we're gonna do an automated pole vector and I just set one up over here you can see I got a little bit of it here and I'm just gonna show you what the pole vector do so what it does is that our animators won't have to animate too much on on the pole vector don't mind the skinning but as you can see here it's moving on its own and when I move my foot I can actually rotate it normally and it will still work um, so we're gonna set that up now but you also see that if I do something like this and then I take my auto pole vector um, attribute over here and turn that down my leg is no longer controlled by that so that's basically what I'm going to show you how to do now it's very simple yet yeah, it's something that we can do that will really help our animators so let's try and just go on and create it for the other hind leg so first off I'm just going to duplicate this locator it's just a regular locator I'm just gonna rename that so now we have one for right I'm just going to parent it underneath my foot control minus out that translation and take it out of the hierarchy again so right now it just ended up in the right position here um, so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an empty group and I'm going to do that just like so so hitting con control G and now I have this empty group down here and I'm just gonna snap that up here to this leg make sure that it's snapped in the middle and just so I name my stuff correctly I'm just gonna go in and steal the name that I had for the other one in here so that's called that R hind um, and the next thing I'll do now is select my pole vector so I think I actually accidentally just grouped that I'm just gonna take that out and I'm gonna parent that underneath my pole vector here so now it actually has a position here and the next thing I'll do is select my foot here and I'm gonna select the pole vector position group that I just created and I'm gonna say point so right now if I move my foot around it's actually pointed in the correct position so the next thing we want to take care of is rotation but the problem is that I don't want it to rotate forward or backwards I just want to have it to rotate I don't want to have it to rotate upwards and downwards I only want to rotate it in the y and y axis and the reason why that is is because the pole vector is actually not affecting our foot in up and down axis it's only ro affecting in in pivoting around that position so I'm gonna take this foot now and I'm gonna take the group and then I'm gonna say constrain and I'm gonna say orient constrain and I'm gonna say orient constrain in y axis only so make sure that you don't have the constraint of all here it has to be only Y and you'll see I get the constraint here so the next thing I'll do is select this um, R hind and I'm gonna do exactly the same so if I say constraint and point and I'm gonna say constraint and orient you can see and these are constraints that you'll see underneath the shape here that underneath the constraint I have the L hind but I also have the hind leg pull vector in world position which is this one right uh, so the next thing now is right now it's only following 50% because 
part of it is being followed by this by this one and the other part is being followed by this bit so we have to just quickly make a switch that will make our rig fo follow just one of them so I'm gonna say I can't remember what I call that attribute so what I'll do here is just quickly snap it on off go into my script editor and you'll see that this auto poll V I want to make sure that I have the same name for my two oh sorry for my actually for all of my feed so I'm just gonna put that in there select all the feed controllers and let's try and put that in there and say a value from 0 to 1 <coughs> so I'm just gonna show you how to do this hind leg and then after afterwards you can do all of them on your own so the next thing I'll do here is I'll select the two constraints and I'll go into my node editor and you'll see I have my two constraints here and what I want to do now is take that controller where I put my attribute on where the switch is and I'm going to add that in here so you can see I get the shape here I don't need that one because I actually added my attribute to my transform node which is this one and you can see it's already connected because obviously uh, we constrain to this controller but now I'm going to try and drag and drop the output of this auto pole vector uh, into the hind leg and we just to clearly understand what we're doing here so we want to create a reverse value and the, the way we would create a reverse value is that as soon as this one is in one I want to activate this one but I don't want I want to have the opposite here as soon as this one is one I want this one to turn zero and we can do that with a reverse value so if I go reverse and hit enter and I'm sure I had one before so I'm quite So I definitely want to have that Elhind. I want to put that in here. I want to call that R instead. And you'll see now that if I do an output here, I say auto pull to the input. Whatever comes out of this one, I can't remember if I hooked that up. So now we know that I want to take the auto pull vector into the control hind leg. And the same thing for the orient constraint. So you can see there's a value of zero coming in, which is fine because our controller is currently at zero. But if I take the, if I take my, and I have the same thing input connection into my reverse node, and you can see that's still zero. But you'll see that what a zero value in a reverse node means. And let's see that here in a second. Is a value of one. So everything that's reverse everything is reversed in a reverse node so 0 become 1 and 1 becomes 0 and you'll see slowly as I'm dialing this value up to 1 and let's try and stop and just like the like here as I put that to point 19 this one is slowly but surely returning to 0 and I can keep that going so if I go here and move that around here so you'll see that my pole vector is now 100% following my foot but if I say auto pull vector off, it's gonna go back, and I can now, and I now have to manipulate my pull vector manually. So the last thing we're gonna do now that that's set up. Oh, I think I just put something up there. That wasn't on purpose. So now that that's set up, I'm gonna parent my pull vector back into my hierarchy, right? Uh, and the last thing I want to do is where do we put these two? pole vectors and because they're positioned exactly where our world controller is that's also where we want our main controller is because wherever our main controller is that should control the position of our pole vector right when we're not using our feet so you can see now if I turn this one to uh, it was already in zero so you can see it's already following correctly but if I put this on in one it's now following the foot so that means that our animators can move the global controller to a position in the world wherever the character is supposed to run around and then afterwards they can offset it with this controller and then they can start animating and they will still be able to have the floating value between on and off which is great and that is the upgrade of the pull vector and I suggest that you all just go on and 
try and do that on your own for your feet and uh, if you hit any bumps on the road let me know I'll continue with making the front ones and then I wish you guys good luck and please let me know if there's anything else so let's continue to the next part that we need to upgrade if this isn't the last I haven't really decided the order yet so let's see but uh, yeah I'm gonna continue making the last one so good luck with that Okay, so welcome back, and uh, now we're gonna quickly upgrade the toes. So our creature will actually have something to bend its fingers or toes with. Uh, and we're gonna do it pretty simple. I'm gonna show you guys how to do one, and then w you can do all of yours. Uh, so let's try and say joint here, and just snap those to the grid again. So we've done all this before. I think that was too many, but that's fine. So I think I'm I can actually do fine with just four. Uh, so let's try and move these out and say let's put these two four just as a start uh, I think actually we're gonna go a little bit further so let's try and say six and then try and scale it up a little bit so we have something to visually show us what we're doing and then the next thing is I'm gonna take the root and I'm gonna drag that over to my foot here and now I mean, I'll be honest, I postponed the feet a little bit, or the toes a little bit, because I wasn't really sure how to approach them. And sometimes it's good to just wait with stuff, because there's so much stuff to do else, so there's no need for us to get stuck, at least not for now, because obviously we've had like plenty of stuff to build. Uh, but yeah, now we're gonna now we're gonna do this. And the reason why I've been a little bit in doubt is because the, these feet are actually not in a straight line. I mean, they do have like a slight bend to them, and I was thinking if I should remodel a... But I kind of don't want to do that. So what what I usually stick on to here is that I normally want my legs to stay forward, my toes to stay completely forward. Because in theory here, there's no need for these toes to be spread out. But this model wasn't really made for rigging. This model was made by the guys that were flip normals, so they could show you show their um, the, their students or their viewers how to make a really cool render. And I was just lucky enough for them to let me have it, which is why. I'm uh, I would I can't really send this back but also like uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with their modeling because that's definitely not um, however it's not optimal for what we could be using so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start rotating these things because what I will be doing is just create something like this and it'll basically just be a straight line and while I am tempted to just pick this one up and let's try and unbind the skin on this one try and rotate it even something like that would really have helped us a lot and now that I've already halfway done that I'm actually gonna leave it here and I'm gonna delete the other one and do the same because as soon as everything is in straight lines when we start rotating these guys around it's gonna be a lot easier to create something that's a little bit nicer curl for our toes you know like something like this it'll be a lot more pretty if everything is in the same straight line and your fingers are the same uh, normally I don't think nature would create like something that's supposed to grab onto something in totally skew in a skewed manner uh, so yeah obviously nothing to say about the modelers but just something to think about when you start modeling your own characters that if you're gonna make them for rigging it's a good idea to keep in mind what what your what your plan is with it basically so another thing I'm gonna mention here and a rule of thumb that I always 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 preach when I'm out teaching is always try and see if you can keep if you have fingers or anything like that it's really really nice if your joint is two-thirds down from the top and let's say that this is the total length a total top to bottom for my finger or for my toe I'll probably keep it somewhere down here so two-thirds so the bottom is one-third and I do that because f for skinning reasons it, it just turns out to be like a little bit more the magic number that's been working for me for a lot of years and I'm passing that on to you just as a good advice you at some point will have to find your where you where you think it's best but for now I suggest that you just place them something like this and it, it you'll see that in your skinning how that actually 
a lot of the times will help like help the look of your of your character uh, so even though I'm a little bit in doubt here what's actually supposed to be and that's why I'm pulling up and down but I'm actually completely not sure what is knuckle and and so I'm assuming that this is a knuckle uh, so that's why I kind of want to have this joint somewhere underneath that so the first thing I'm going to do now is just go here and I'm going to try and rotate this this one upwards I'm going to take this one so as, so, so as soon as I'm rotating instead of actually moving my joints are still orienting correctly as soon as I freeze freeze the rotation so in this case I'm going to do something like this and I think we're going to stick with this now so you can see like I'm totally just sitting and figuring out where I want my stuff I'm not I'm not afraid of moving stuff again like you know some a lot of the times what happens to especially people that are new to rigging is that they'll sit and move things back and forwards and then then they will say like okay now enough is enough and i'm gonna well it's okay to like sit and and nerdle it around i mean it's it has to be you know you know that if you don't do it correctly you're gonna have to do it later on and that being said we should still try and I've been preaching that we move on fast and we don't think too much but we have to think that our base has to be correct and it's the base that we want to move fast on all the other stuff um, all the other stuff like joint placement all that stuff is a part of the base and that stuff has to be like correct else everything we do we're going to have to change the base and we don't want to change bases we want to change we want to change the high end mechanics because as soon as the base is correct we don't have to rebuild and that's really important so right now I'm just taking that joint chain and I'll just memorize that what I probably should do now is rename it so let's call this L front AJ uh, actually because we gotta we gotta define that as a front since we we're gonna have toes so front toe and I always define that it's a toe in my naming and I'm gonna say toe and we're gonna call this uh, it must be there let's see what is this on there actual beast so that must be a pinky so let's say pinky middle index well we got we don't really have a thumb so let's say index middle ring ring pinky yeah let's go with that so toe pinky aj jnt let's steal these names and great and let's move this around so like a lot of stuff like also a real, well, another reason to wait with toes is that it's quite tedious to just sit and move all these joints around and our animators don't really need this kind of stuff in order to get them started i mean they don't need to sit and tweak feet and all that stuff from the beginning which is why i've, I've postponed it a little bit as well so i'm just gonna move that up slightly and you can see like I'm I'm stopping as soon as I I can see that it's somewhat there since this is a class and not you know a feature film model because in feature films what you would do is basically sit and place all your joints and then you would present that to your supervisors or your head of departments doing something that's called dailies and then the whole team will sit doing dailies and talk about you're going to present what you've been doing and you're going to comment on other people's work uh, and during that process everybody gets a saying in the rigging team or whoever's on the current show that you're working on and everybody will have a saying and, and explaining to you what what you can improve in your What you can improve in your um, in your joint placements to get the best information possible but here we don't really have a whole team of riggers who can sit and tell us what will be correct or not um, so we're just gonna do 
you know something that that i just personally find okay and this is how you should probably do it but if you really want to do great and if you really want to get feedback and all that stuff i suggest that you could actually just take a whole character and place all the base joints and then post a picture a couple of side views front views you know top views and show people on rigging forums where you've placed your joints and i guarantee you that people from the big companies will try it like if they see that sort of stuff they will relate to it and say like you know what i think you can do this and that and i think even though this is anatomically correct you can definitely try and do something like this and it's really noticeable that people who really cares about where they where they're placing their stuff will always get the best result right so try and call this for the ring oh sorry so find pinky replace with ring oh why didn't that happen I guess I didn't do it. Okay, so it's because it has to be a capital P and obviously a capital ring. And let's try and take this one and call it middle. And again, capital. And pinky and take that with index so now all the joints have been placed and we've renamed all our chains the next thing we need to do is get those parent into our hierarchy but we also need to create fk's photo and we need to freeze transformation but i think this would just be like the quick introduction of like my thought process my thought process on where and how i place my my joints in the feed and you can see i'm still correcting some stuff here at the end of this video but in the next video we're gonna just upgrade it and set some attributes and create some control loss for these so obviously this is some a workflow that i would always script but because uh, not everybody in this course are capable of scripting, I feel like we should still just make everything manually. So if you know how to script, then you will definitely know how to make this into just a loop of making these guys into FKs. And then after that, we can do something like setting up some attributes that will help our animators. But anyways, this is it for now. And uh, I'll see you in the next part. Okay, so as uh, here we are with the joints placed or placed as well as we have time for, but this will do good. So um, what we want to do now is create FK controllers for all these fingers and then later on we want to set up a system that can sort of help us uh, either make, make specific positions with our claws, but basically something that can do that a little bit more automated so we don't have to select all our controllers every time anyway so let's get to it the first thing we're going to do now is just duplicate one of these controllers up here so i have just that needle and i kind of just want to kill everything underneath it and i'm going to kill that one as well uh, and let's see so that's here and the next thing i'm going to do now is parent it underneath my joint here and then i'm going to first of all take the translations and move them around and it's almost there but we still need to do a few things so first off we still want to have this orientation so basically we want it to look something like this right uh, and basically I think what we want here and I can't really let's just see here so we kinda wanna get that rotation here oh, okay so the problem first of all is that the rotation is not frozen from our joint so I'm quickly just gonna take this out of the hierarchy and then I'm gonna make sure that these are frozen because the, the thing is my joints are already rotated correctly to aim for the next one but they're not frozen and we want that because then the actual orientation will be applied to them so you can see now if any of you saw that but this sort of switch to point at the next joint instead which is exactly what we want so I'm quickly gonna freeze these 
and that's that. And then you can see if it's properly frozen, there should only be one value. Uh, okay, so I can see here that something is not correct. Uh, okay, let's see how we can deal with that. So that one's aiming correctly. This one's actually the only one that's not aiming correctly. So, hmm, let's see. Orient that. Orient the way we always orient. I'm not too happy about that rotation I'm getting here. Because uh, this is actually what I want it to look like. Um, so I am wondering why that's giving me that. Or I'm children of selected joints. Let's try and hit that one off. And let's figure out why we're getting that value of 10 degrees here. And while these ones are still parent underneath, I'm going to unparent that. Just try and... Sorry, let's unparent this one. And then orient this guy. And take away this value here and we're probably gonna have to do the opposite on this one so because that's obviously compensating and then the next one here I'm gonna parent back in here so now should be fairly flat 19 0 so the first one is obviously okay and the next ones are fine Yeah, so basically what I'm looking for now, just so you guys know what I'm trying to get my head around here. Oh, and I can see this one is obviously not correct either. So let's try to aim that one. And let's try and move this. So bas basically what I want to see when I'm moving this around is that if I rotate and I rotate and I rotate, it should be rotating on top of each other, as you can see here. Because if it isn't, then the bend is going to look weird. It will basically be as if when our animators are rotating on one axis, what you would really be seeing is something like like this, where you can see it starts skewing, and that's really unusual or not necessarily very realistic. Uh, which actually leaves us in, in the unfortunate event that we need to kill these ones and just try and get this one around again. Uh, so in this case I am actually going to use these rotation values. And just try and make that match again. So uh, Yeah, yeah. So that's of course unfortunate, but we kind of want to get these things right before we move on so I'm seeing if I can bend it from here and I think I can uh, it wouldn't hurt to take it out a little bit further so I think I'm gonna do that something like this duplicate him or her <laughs> and get it over here And that's good enough. Do the last one. Move that over here, move that back here. Keep on. I kind of want to move this one down a little bit. And see if I can rotate this one upwards. Let's try and get that minus 20 instead. There we go. Oh, and take this one and give that about. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's the last one, but just to give it something that looks a little bit more decent. So now, what we're gonna do? So we have this controller here that we left here. Uh, I'm gonna parent that underneath my joint here. And what I kind of want to 
a void. So first off, right now you can see that I oriented it completely to fit my my foot. But as you know, the orientation that we really want is not set here for our controller. As you can see that if I select this one, my X is actually the forward pointing axis and my X is out. So we actually have that in world space. So what I'm going to do now is take this guy out and I'm going to rotate him until I have that. And basically, you can see if I take him back now and I rotate him 90 degree in Y axis, I actually have that position that I want. Uh, and that's basically how you're going to get there. So if I take this one out now, and then let's try and make this guy a little bit smaller. Try and scale from the base. And I might need to manipulate my controller a little bit in order to make it logical. So as you can see here, it's not very nice that he's inside. So I'm just going to do something like that to pull that out. Uh, but before I do that, I quickly just want to duplicate it so I don't have to make that straight again. And the next thing I'm going to do is parent that underneath here. Move that over here. Duplicate this orient group. Put it underneath here. Parent. Minus all these out. Leave the 90 degrees because the 90 degrees is what we need to go back into our original position. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to do here now is that even though they're rotated because they want to fit the joints, I'm just going to take the shape and make that pretty. But not necessarily, but I'm not changing the position of the, of the actual controller because I kind of want that to be where it is right now. So I'm going to take the last one here and try and see if we can make something logical out of this. And maybe what I want to do is also drag this one up a little bit. So you can see now we have, well, relatively decent controllers. Something like that. And then maybe down with this guy a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that'll do fine for uh, for now. I mean, I'd still recommend that you go in and make that pretty because this obviously doesn't look too good. And I'm not, yeah, I'm not too sure if this is the shape I want to go with either. But... I got a feeling it could be good. I just got a feeling that I'm not spending enough time on making it pretty. So let's try and just get these ones in here. Get that cleaned up. Like, like so. And let's try and go out of that component mode. Ah, that's a little bit better. So because I just showed you guys where to put these things, what we could do is just duplicate these controllers around. But before we do that, obviously, we want to make sure that these are named correctly so let's get them out of here with the orange group of course there we go and as you can see this making stuff like feet is really really tedious and I kinda wanna save that to the end because it's first of all tweak finimators but also it can kill you guys a little bit sitting and doing this stuff it is quite heavy to do just because it's not technically hard but it's just time consuming so I'm just gonna show you one toe and then you can do all the others on your own so here I'm just gonna call this the L front oh let's actually look for neck and <laughs> recall that with front toe front toe and let's call that the this was the pinky and oh and obviously we want to make sure that it's not called AGC but first off let's just get this fixed so this is not the this is gonna be the pinky as well and this is obviously also the pinky however this one is the AJA so let's go AJ C with AJ and let's go call AJC with AJB 
and then we have that and then the last one is already called C and then we just create our basic hierarchy of FKs and now we can constrain our toes to these things so if I say constrain parent constraint with maintain offset do the same thing for this guy do the same thing for this guy so now if I select my three controllers oopsie, we have our first toe so the next thing I would do now is that I would go in on my foot controller and I would say add attribute and I would just say one displayable and now the what you need to do is create an attribute that would bend all controllers at the same time so I would say uh, toe controls toe control just make it a displayable then right click on that thing and just make it just lock it because then you have like sort of differentiating between your regular foot controllers and your actual toes so now I'm gonna say add an attribute to this guy and while I'm doing this I might as well just do that for all of my f feed controllers so that's one thing that we can optimize now that we're not scripting and let's try and say toe controls Playable, lock that, make it playable, lock it. Now I'm gonna say add attribute pinky bend. Let's not give it a minus and a plus. So now all of these controllers have a pinky bend. And the next thing I'm gonna do is select this controller here. And I'm gonna select the modify groups of these. I'm going to go into general editors and connection editor and now we're just going to connect that up to my pinky bend so rotate and this is where you can do like sides you can do like this is the bend and I could do like a pinky uh, side and a pinky twist to just set up all of them uh, sometimes people will also do set driven keys to and if you do set driven keys, you can basically use the same channel for the same thing. I'll use set driven key for another thing just to show you guys how, how that works. So what I'm trying to do in this tutorial series is that I'm also trying to show you guys how to do things in different ways. So maybe we can do that for maybe the hind leg so we can do something specific when... Um, but let's just first off here, just connect the, 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 the first way to do it. Uh, so the bend that we need here and the reason that looks funky is because I'm in not in object mode so basically I want to use my rotate x-axis and now you'll see as I use my bend here I basically have a an attribute to control all these three controllers so in the animation graph our animators will only have to look at one curve instead of three curves with a lot of open channels so I'm not gonna okay so have these already locked because we stole them from the neck but I would suggest that you lock everything in one go or at least go over your controllers in one big go so you don't forget any uh, but that's basically what we're gonna do for all of these uh, so I'm gonna do one for the let's see the ring in the middle and the index finger here and then duplicate that over to the other side and do the do the same thing over here and you can use mirror joint and once you're done with setting up these joints uh, for instance I'm done with doing the pinky here I'm just gonna take that I'm gonna parent that underneath my foot controller here so once I'm moving around like this and then of course I want my controllers as well let's try and kill this Make sure there's nothing here. Uh, duplicated names. And let's get those parented underneath the foot control as well. Oh, that was my error. Doesn't matter. And there you go. And now we can start moving our toes as well. Uh, some of you are going to ask, and I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure some of you have already been thinking it. Can I add 
joints to my skin cluster and obviously you can so if you've already started doing some of your skinning that's totally perfectly fine so what you want to do is select the pinky joints here and obviously we select these three and you would never select the end joint we already know that so you would select your skin that's and you can see that because the channels are locked you can check is there a skin cluster there is so you go on the skin here and you would say add influence and I would say remove to have lock weights on it's um it's very nice that you if you if you don't have this one on from the beginning uh, when you add these weights they're gonna go in and they're gonna take weights on their own and just sort of like apply it however they feel and if you've already done skinning you'll probably lose some work so make sure you don't do that uh, so lock weights and then inside the skinning tool make sure you unlock that but more about skinning later and then uh, this is it for like the basic uh, basically setting up toe controls and this applies to bipeds as well I mean you would always do some 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 sort of attribute so what I could also do here is I would probably do like a uh, I could do I could do like a, a spread function which would basically be set driven keys so when I use the spread finger spread it would take this one and use the set driven key to drive out this chain and it would take this one and spread it out a little bit less and then spread out this one to the other side and spread out this a lot more to the other side that way you have that spread function and if you then invert those you can go inside as well to narrow the gap between the fingers um, but in for now we're just gonna do it like this and then um, because it's quite tedious and we can't kind of still don't still want to keep it basic so so this is it for for the for the pinkies uh, I hope you guys are gonna do all your other feet and you understand what to do now uh, and good luck and let me know if there's anything you can either throw me a mail or you can um, write to on the questions on Vimeo or uh, yeah contact me uh, hopefully somebody else can help you who's doing the course as well uh, remember to sign up for the newsletter on the website it's really nice for me to be able to update you guys with uh, whenever I'm posting a new tutorial so this tutorial series is not going to be the only one it's also going to be um, there's going to be more coming in the future so yeah uh, in order to stay updated and get them as soon as possible you should go in and throw in your mail and I'll, I'll keep you updated anyway so good luck with this and uh, I'll see you soon